tribute. We ought to do an episode on the Red Green Show. Recording in progress. <laughs> See if anyone out there, if anyone out there has heard of the Red Green Show, this is a hangover from our discussion of Graham Greene yeah. and his Roland Echo. Go ahead and hit us up on the socials. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> that's how I'm starting the episode about the Marvels. So <laughs> Sharon uh, Blady and Dwight Hurst here to host for y'all today. We're going to be talking about the the... MCU film, The Marvels. Or is it just Marvels? Now I can't remember. Now no, it, I'm it, all... It's The Marvels, and I think we're recording the day before it goes on to uh, Disney Plus and the other streaming services, moving from theater to home viewing. Aha, uh-huh, there we go. It is The yeah, Marvels. You're so... Right. So yeah, everybody out there uh, know know that as you see this. So this is a this is an interesting one uh, to talk about. We'll, we'll dive into some of the issues they do cover. Um, I will say, first of all, this is one that I came into. I was really excited for this one to come out. And I found that my excitement was mostly justified. I would say, just from my own perspective as a viewer, I felt that it uh, didn't quite nail the third act as much as I wished it had from the emotional stuff for me. Uh, However, I thought it was awesome. I'm throughout. I yeah. really oh, enjoyed no. me it. Too. Me too. Would watch and, it and I can see where, and, and I think a lot of it too, for me, in terms of expectations is, I hate to say it, but we've got enough toxic fans out there that I always get a little twitchy about what gets said in advance and what that, you know, what people, and, and it's just that whole, again, we've talked about this before, like, you know, don't yuck somebody else's yum kind of thing. And, and that this was just the poster child for being attacked in some respects. Oh, and you knew, right. You know, I it's knew. like, we've got <laughs> three female leads. Uh, yeah. Um, we've got a female, you know, writing, directing staff. Um, and it was just, it was like all the stuff to double down on. And Absolutely. then, I mean, and then we can get into the whole issue of, you know, what's, what's the politics or what's the, you know, image left by the fact that, you know, that we're seeing women getting either shorter films or, um, you know, again, like, Black Widow in terms of like the, the the lack of support, the only non-theater release and all these other kinds of things. What do you read into that? And what do you take as, you know, in this case, the director was just like, you know, she actively said she wanted a shorter movie because when you stop and think about it, you know, the movies in the MCU kept growing and growing to the point that I was like, okay, when do we get the admit, you know, the intermission bathroom break? Oh, and, yes. <laughs> you know, like and- it's the, this is the, like, I, again, the, I will always hang around for five more minutes of, you know, Thor or whoever else, or, you know, give me more T'Challa at the drop of a hat and, and uh, you know, any of these characters, but by God, like, like her wanting to do something tighter and, and in a sense, um, faster editing as opposed to epic, you know, kinds of long shots and things like that. It made sense. And not but every it, movie. It's still, you know, it still needs, can make you a little twitchy. Yeah, not every movie needs to be three uh, three plus hours for crying yeah. out loud. There is something to be said for the art form of movies being about telling a story, you know, within, if you can tell a story within, I mean, seriously, 90 to 120 minutes, that's very impressive. If it's mm-hmm. like, not not to say that there's not a lot of good movies out there that are three hours that I like and all that, but but. Yeah, uh, yeah. The exactly. whole world doesn't need Snyder cuts, but um. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Although that that seems to be his jam now. He, he came out saying that he can't wait to release the Snyder cut of the movie he just made. By the way, I don't know if any. Yeah, yeah. There. I know you see, and that's Funny one of those stuff. like you know what? Then do a television series. That's a good. Give it yeah. to him six, eight, or twelve episodes. Although you, know? Can get, you can get two sales, you know, for the prize of one movie. Anyway, not to get lost in the Snyderverse stuff, but you no, know, you're absolutely right. I think that um, having uh, and and it's good to know that that was a directorial choice uh, mm-hmm. as well. And I think as we've touched on before, one of the things that is once again easy to miss for some of us with an entitlement, right? We can go, oh wow, representation, because what what do we look at? The cast list. But what should mm-hmm. we look at? The writers and director list, right? That's yeah. what that's where uh, uh, the representation also happens. That that's very important. So so either way, but. I, I will say that um, tying together like w- what is kind of the psychological emphasis of this movie, there's a lot of things that I think are very interesting. To me, this is also Kamala Khan's movie um, as far as that goes. I think she's the star of the whole thing to me um, is just the performance, you know, the the performance that uh, Iman yeah. Rani brings. There's, 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 there's definitely, well, and the fact that her family is in it too, I have to say, awesome. I love 
Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole other. That you know? to me was the real. I know that they went for some. There were, and there. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna trash on anyone's reactions to this. But the the Monica Rambo uh, being willing to sacrifice herself and everything. That was like an emotional punch they were going for. For me, the family relationship of the Khan family was was much more emotionally resonant. Actually, mm-hmm. um, this I felt like they really nailed that. At least for me, you know that that. Well, was I and, and I think that's the thing is is that it it fulfilled and also also challenged a lot of, um, again, assumptions or stereotypes that we have around whether it's different characters. So, I mean, first of all, again, you had three female superhero leads. You had the the villain was a female. And again, I had some of my own issues around that because it was the whole, okay, well, it's, it's you know, after all of these years where you have a male lead and a male villain. Okay. That's one thing. Uh, okay. Now we're starting to mix up the cast, but is it, you know, can a, can a female, can female heroes only fight another female? Is that representation or is that just turning this into, you know, further marginalized in a cat fight? Um, you know, that kind of, you know, so which, which way is it going? What are the choices? But I do think all of the characters were done well. I did love, as you said, that, you know, they made this, you know, Kamala's movie in a sense. But I, I think that was cool in that Captain Marvel, I think that's the other part. And I even think about the the first movie where, again, a lot of the things, but then done differently. And so this was that opportunity and that you got to see her in these different relationships. And I think the part that I found interesting is that there was a moment where you realize, oh, yeah, wait a second. She hasn't, because of, again, her powers, hasn't aged. So this is that sort of, you know, there's the three stages of life sort of thing. Like she's this, the elder, so to speak, and we might not necessarily think of her that way. There's her niece. And then here's the, like, the young, fresh-eyed, you know, Oh my! Like again, starstruck, a minty protagonist who is yeah, yeah, yeah. and 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 then and in a sense, still needing her family. Which again, what I thought was interesting about that because we go back to how many superhero things are about this person as the lone person. They've been orphaned. They've been this. They've been that. No, no, no. You've got her mother with like. You're bringing her home right now. She is not allowed to do this. Or, yeah, so your friend showed up and was can in the I, living room and da-da-da-da-da. And what are you doing? And can like, I say, too? And, and you just you just watch because there's this whole thing where it's like, <laughs> what are you been keeping from us? Who are you hanging out with? Yes. And why are they showing up in our house? And it's like, what do you mean they were here? Oh, my God. Like, like how dare you meet them before like before I got I get to. to. And like, you could just tell that she's like, I could not have been in on this because, trust me, if I met Captain Marvel... Oh my God, I'd be bouncing around the walls. You would know about it. I could not hide that secret. And one, of, <laughs> one of my favorite con family moments is when super villains, low key henchmen level, mm-hmm. let's be honest, but powerful henchmen, super villains show up in their house and they just start kicking ass. They just yes. start, I'm going to hit it with a broom. I don't care. And, you know, obviously yeah. not to be rescued out of that thing, but, but it kind of goes. I also like that even though the mom is this worried mom, they do revisit the same thing they did in the Miss Marvel show, which is ultimately her response is, I'm proud of you. I know you need to do this and you have the power to do it. So get out there and do it. Um, That there's this idea. And I think that goes a bit deeper into the parent child relationship than historically, these kinds of things were always like, Oh, mom and dad don't get it. They're weighing us down. And I think you see this trend to say, let's actually humanize all the characters more. You see this in turning red Mm -hmm. is very good at this. I find. And you know, there's other where it's like, yeah, there's, there can be a trope there. And, and so they're kind of taking what works with that trope, what's funny and useful, but then deepening the relationship. And that reminds me. And that healthiness of, you know, if I've done a good job, you know, I've done my best raising you. I'm not pretending to be perfect. Yes, I'm going to lean into obviously some of the overprotectedness because, oh, my God, my daughter's in a spaceship, uh, you know, (laughs) a trillion miles away. Yeah, Yeah, I'd be a little twitchy. But, uh, like again, coming around to, you know what? I know I've done the best that I can. I've seen that you are trustworthy, responsible, this and that. And I can't let my discomfort get in the way of understanding that you can be trusted with this and that this is where, I, you know, I've given you the roots. Here are the wings. Yes. Take your wings, go with it. I felt like, and speaking of kind of deepening and humanizing people, 
one of the things that this movie really does is it deepens this concept of you should never meet your heroes because mm-hmm. you do see, but, but I think one of the things about that trope that can be annoying is it's always the same. You meet your hero, they suck, or you meet your hero, they kind of suck, but they don't really cause they're here. And so, yeah, there's a little bit of this where, where Miss Marvel almost right out the gate, they go to this planet and Captain Marvel's making this hard decision right away of, well, we'll save who we can. And she's like, these people are going to die, though. And so she has to confront this. And then ultimately, also, we discover that Captain Marvel is this, like, demigod slash venge- vengeful god. Is yeah, the she's seen as the anti-hero the in Hala. Yeah. Right, right. And depending, and even, uh, you know, her, uh, uh, the other planet. But by the way, one of the things I like about this movie is they weren't afraid to just go full craziness in some areas like here's a planet that communicates with song we're going to transport people (laughs) inside of aliens stomachs anyway i thought that was super fun yeah but the idea that um, (laughs) yeah getting getting to know the sort of the humanity right the the um the humanity of this process of saying and we see it on Kamala's reactions of like getting Mm -hmm. to know but she she gets to know and next thing you know she's providing the sort of mentoring about certain mm-hmm. emotional things that uh you know that Carol never really has has confronted, particularly in her post amnesia life. Mm-hmm. Right. She's never had like the family. Uh obviously she did before that, you know. Um and and so anyway, I just thought that was interesting to see that flip where she's mentoring her in some ways of maybe emotional intelligence and mm-hmm. and then she's also kind of coming to terms in a more human way about like, oh, wow, you're not, you're not perfect. But at the same time, the little fangirl thing never goes away, which. Oh, is oh yeah. The fangirl too. stuff never goes away. I mean, and I think that even that fangirl stuff, I love how at the beginning where you have the whole thing about them, you know, switching locations and what's happened with the, 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 the ruptures and, and just that, you know, watching her go from like, Again, the perfectly logical blood curdling screams of I'm spinning around in space to oh my god, Nick Fury, is this an adventure test? Like just the, that's, you know, the that's the humanity you know? too. I really and he's like... just like, Who are you? What are you? Yeah. Where where did Monica go? And 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 so that that <laughs> dynamic and then how they end up again. And it, it like I think that was the other part, like what especially when I rewatched it was just this idea of yeah, there she is with her hero and her hero is telling her not to do stuff. But then at the same time, it's a case of, yeah, because we have to keep, because it's the three of us that keep switching. And if we're going to keep switching, let's just keep it to the two of us. That way it's a straight switch. And we, again, they might still not, shall we say, know each other's things and everything, but it's the, it's less, slightly less chaotic and and that there's a certain amount of things they can do without their powers. And so it was that idea of like the proverbial, hate to say it, but you're the kid and you're the third wheel right now. And how much of that is a teenager response mm-hmm. to things yeah. where where on one. And, but again, she doesn't have that time um, to explain. No, this is not about we're sidelining you because we don't think you're old enough or you're this or you're that this is the best way that I can think of doing things right now. And yeah, and it's and, and that whole it doesn't look great on paper. I get it. <laughs> I get it. But this is the, you know, I have the choice of saving 20, 25% of the people or trying to save everybody and we all die. Mm-hmm. Pick one. I- and and yes, I need you to do this other task that I get it. It's not fun to be the person that has to go mow the lawn before a company comes over for the yard party. I get that you want to be in the kitchen or maybe, you know what? But I need you to mow the lawn and do the raking so that we can do all these other things. It sucks. I get it. But, you know, so so it was kind of like, in a way, she had to take on a mom role. And then then there's the whole dancing around, well, what do I do with Monica? Because I feel like, you know, <laughs> we got some abandonment issues. But I love when they have these different conversations where, I mean, it's the whole, I didn't want to come back because I had to keep... I broke something. I have to fix it. I didn't want to tell you I was the anti... You know, I've become the villain someplace else. And I didn't want you... And it's like the... Like, again, one of those, like, she's like uh, would I have known that? Like, it's not like this is, you know, what you did on Hala is not showing up on the six o'clock news where I would be right. like sitting down and watching TV going, oh, my God, there's my auntie. And she's like, you know, evil on this other planet a bajillion miles away. <laughs> 
No, and I do feel like my one eye. of the things Marvel's tried to do in its projects that is interesting, and and to be honest, if you're a comics reader, comics you know always try to visit this too. One of the most interesting, let's say, weaknesses is the fallout that you can't avoid if you're a superhero, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, <clears throat> it's like you have your. Oh, excuse me. You know, Superman's uh, biggest weakness that's most interesting isn't kryptonite or a red sun. It's that he can't mm-hmm. save everybody, right? Yeah. And and he, but yet he feels like he should be able to because he's mm-hmm. so powerful that and and to be sort of impotent in that way, you know. And and so you get into the the after effects of the blip, and you get into just basically all the stuff like that. Um, and I also. I love the way that it's obviously probably written this way and stuff too, but the way that Villani, when she's playing uh, Kamala Khan, she nails what I think is missing in a lot of fantasy and sci-fi uh, types of stories, which is a real reaction. Like she sees, you know, mm. the Flurgan eat the bad guys, and she's not like <laughs> uh, she's not like awesome. Let's roll with this. She goes, "Oh no, that was yeah. horrifying! It's like it's the, the worst cat. thing I've ever seen." <laughs> yeah yeah oh exactly well and, and and yeah how how she responds to things well and again even that whole thing where there's the flipping back and forth and then what do you mean captain marvel was here like yeah there's an intensity that she truly captures like i would say a very again not to there's just there's something there that she's us in a way like she she represents and I, and i think that's what i've loved about certain characters and she's definitely the one that's sort of to the nth degree where it's like this is real people like this is this is like the audience is like you get to in a sense it's the yeah if i was suddenly found myself and this is how i would be reacting to if i suddenly found out that da, 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 this is what i would be doing and because for some reason we had spider-man cool. and we had peter parker with right. the you know let me let me have an accident while i try to figure out how to swing from this or jump from this and wow that concrete hurt or you know, gravity still works, even if I have webs, um, you know. We're getting that reaction from Sam in Civil War, where he's like, you know, I don't mm. know how many fights you've been in, but you're, you, this is a lot of talking for a fight. Just things like that, where there's the the yeah. innocence. You see that with her, too, where she's like, we're a team, you know? And yeah. it's like, you know, whereas <laughs> oftentimes in, in stories like this, there's a pressure to be cool, right? Mm-hmm. And and to have a character that can be like, well, no, I'm a teenager. I wouldn't be cool in this setting. And, well, and, and the fact that, in a sense, they're all not cool in their own way, but they are cool. Like, so the fact that, again, she's running around and she's trying to give, you know, Monica a name because Monica needs a code name, and, you know, and he, or, or even just the whole, like, there's a file on me. And well, if this is top secret, why is it clear? That's not really secure. Is this a fly path? Like, you know, just like, again, the, that's what you deal with when you, again, it's, I think a lot of us as parents are like, oh my God, it's the, you know, I got the toddler, but why, but why, yeah. but why? Um, and so that idea that she's trying to come up with a name because she needs a name, but even when they're learning their powers and le- or learning how to, you know, they go from the, here's the chaotic where anytime one of us tries to do a thing, something happens and we're all kind of fumbling. And yes, we eventually, it, it all gets sorted out. Um, and we're able to have the conversation, have the awkward introductions in the, trashed con living room (laughs) and and and, you know what's the cat gonna either ingest or spit out next um and and then take it to the okay well if we're gonna do this how does it work and then you see them and and it's everything from like the juggling the balls but then you get you see them doing hopscotch and that, watching how, and, was, and, and so like the hopscotch thing is like, part. oh my yeah. God, there's the childhood thing. And, and there's, there's the girls bonding. There's the, you know, like that's a, that's a childhood thing. And, and I, one of the things that I love that's brilliant about that analogy is first of all, when you're doing that kind of thing, it's still the how are when to jump in and just waiting for her and how all the, you know, not even with the switching, but just the, when is it my, when when do I time myself to jump in t- between the skipping ropes as it goes? And you watch the other two with, you know, more confidence go in there and do it. But, you know, Kamala is kind of like a little bit more hesitant and then eventually she gets it and then they're able to do that. And so to me, that was like a really cool thing. And especially again, when you think about, you know, the kind of childhood that each of them has had for their own different reasons, there's that in a sense, sort of like the, okay, I get to embrace my inner child, so to speak, have re, re- make some childhood memories that I maybe didn't get otherwise built do team building as well as 
it's not your standard war room. Got to learn how to use my superpowers. We can actually, it, it leans into some of that irreverence that I think we find with the Captain Marvel stuff where it's the, yeah, you know, we could go full, you know, uh, X-Men war room, but no, we're up, at, you know, because we're up in a spaceship and we can do whatever. No, we're going to like, we're going to skip. We're going to do yeah. some other stuff that's actually cool. Yeah, that 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 was a fascinating thing to me. It, it In a way, it reminded me of No Way Home. When mm. uh, he keys into, you know, the other two Spider Men, and is like, "We got to work as a team." I've been in a team. You've been in a team. We don't have time to talk about that. All that. Mm-hmm. The the difference in this one, of course, is, and uh, action movies and super movies are famous for like very sh- training montages being like, yeah, you know, a couple days of this, and I'm an expert. Uh, but they at least have some practice time. But the interesting thing is this kind of trying to collaborate when you've got these different perspectives you've got. Um, and, and one of the great things about Kamala Khan, I keep coming back to her yeah. is that she's someone who's grown up with an M- There is an MCU that exists within the MCU. There yeah. is fandom and movies and clips and videos and all these things and autobiographies and interviews with the heroes and all that. And so she's one of the few like superhero characters who actively wanted to be a superhero, then became one, right? In a yeah, world in yeah, which yeah. That it was is a dream come true as opposed to what do you mean I got right. bit by a thing or yes. zapped by a thing? <laughs> and so then you've got the other ones that I feel like it's more kind of a sense of duty. They're both military, at least, you know, like like Mm -hmm. both military minded, explorer minded, you know, kind of people who have kind of, oh, well, we have to do this, you know, sort of. Here's the mission. Here's the mission. Right. And putting ourselves in that way and having, uh, you know, and you could say there's a lot of things that go back there, having that youth perspective. And as you put it, it's kind of like, okay, we have the more mature perspective. We have uh, probably, probably a little more powerful powers, especially (laughs) with Gerald Danvers. Uh, so we're going to take the lead and do this, but you see where a uh, time and time again woven into this. And I don't think they overdo this the way it sometimes can be tropey once again, but she does bring something to the table, right? She brings like insights yeah. and when she's sort of allowed and she uh, applies her powers and things, um, you know, she, she brings something. And also there's just the excitement of that too. And I think that's contained very well in what you're referencing, which is we're using play. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, we're using play to kind of work through this uh, to to train and to get in sync with each other. And and that okay. that part's quite interesting. And and we could even go into the science around the whole idea that, you know, learning a lesson, if you can learn, you know, kids learn faster through play than they do through, Absolutely. you know, when you teach life skills and whatever. And, and I think a lot more of us would probably do well to, you know. Again, I get everything can't be gamified into a video game, but there's a lot of things that we could do where it's just like, again, you know, take the sticks out of our collective tuchuses and, uh, you know, Look at <laughs> and, and relax a little we bit. Just, and we, I think even we how she stood up Bluey. for herself yeah. With, yeah, with the quantum bands and it was the whole like, you know, where did you get that? My grandma, how she mailed it to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm more flippant entitled to this than you. Like, if anything, you've got my grandma's bangle. Not right. the, you, you, you dug exactly. something up on a planet. Yours, yeah, this is mine. Like this is family yeah. legacy. So yeah, she even brings that sense of like again the ownership of her powers. Like the, it, like you say, it's you know she's happy to be there. She knows where it comes from. Again, it might not be the full larger history, but this is this is my legacy. This is who I am, and and that she sees it as these bangles traveled literally across time and space to get yeah. to her as opposed to this person on a quest. And I think that was the other part too, that when you look at Darben and it's like so many of these other anti-heroes that we've talked about or villains, it's this whole something happened and there was a plot twist and whatever, and that, you know, that harm. And well, and again, and even the role that Carol plays in that, right. Where she's got this sense of, and again, fits so perfectly when we think about her own origin story and what Jan Rog beat into her and just that, that whole larger pre, you know, gaslighting system that was going on there, where it was like, you know, I went in and I tried to, you know, do this thing. I thought I would, you know, you know, fix it this way. Oops. Well, we all have the, again, the big whoopsies, you know, <laughs> talked about. she had a pretty big whoopsie, but at the same time, it was one of those, yes, it was an unintended consequence. Yes. You can want to repair it, but the, 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 the way she's internalized the blame and the shame is still that remnant of, again, for whatever growth, healing, whatever, 
oh, holy flipping trigger that <laughs> still, you know, I'm, I'm healed with this. I'm healed with that. And, oh, geez, over here, all the stuff. I just, I, I, I tried to fix the thing and I broke the whole thing. Yeah. And, and now I feel responsible, but at the same time, she problem solves. And, and, and again, that whole bit, that's where, you know, uh, Kamala comes into the, the, well, what are they looking for? Oh, okay. Well, it's water. It's this, it's that. And so, yeah, she brings something to the table they all grow. They all, in a sense, deal with their different baggage. And, you know, I have to say, I, I, I love too, like what happened between, you know, between Monica and Carol as well, because it was that reparation. And it was that, you know, I lost my mom. You were the only, you know, you're my only family. And I get that you were trying to pick up somebody else's mess over there. And this thing that you feel guilty about. And, um, and, and, and that's some weird shame about stuff that I was never going to, know about if you didn't tell me <laughs> but I needed you too and I think that's another thing from a parent child or any kind of when we have you know somebody whether it's I would say slightly older than somebody that we see in a role of some sort of caregiving or guardianship or whatever where it's the I get it you got stuff with work but you know what I still need you at my soccer game I still need Absolutely. you to like, you know, and it's yeah. that whole reminder of, you know, nobody's going to sit there, you know, uh, on their deathbed and go, alas, if I only attended one more meeting, <laughs> you know? And you do, I, I think that uh, you do see that once again, as there's this more human weakness that is amplified, obviously, by the the mission mm. of these these heroes and things, which is to connect even to just those around them. Right. And we've seen that played out with a lot of these kind of uh, with a lot of these kind of relationship issues. Interestingly enough, uh, boy, here's another thing we could spin off on. Um, interestingly enough, a lot of times with with women. I mean, you've seen it a few times with men as well. I think Hawkeye and his family and mm. there's some of that in the Eternals with um but and a couple others sprinkled out. Here's another here's another little episode we can go. Mm. <laughs> We could dig in, which is uh, uh, that kind of role there too. And for you do see that oftentimes uh, showcased, like Black Widow and her sister. This case, anyway. I but again, you see how it's that. mostly female leads. Idea. Where we see where it's mostly female leads that we see family stuff, yeah. and that the rare exceptions are, you know, when you get family stuff related to uh, like to Sam, uh, to you know, yes, you got it with um, with Hawkeye and with T'Challa. Like those are the yeah. only. Places. And Tony eventually, I guess. Tony eventually. Say, but, but even that is still more like, and that's him and his past and getting into, you know, augmented reality stuff to address his his baggage. And um, it's still about him having to leave. Now he gives mm -hmm. his life and all that too, but it is different. Yeah. And he doesn't yeah, have to stay and nurture although i to be fair he was a nurturing dad in the you know clips we yeah. saw oh, oh yeah and the one but, interaction with his child that we saw yeah <laughs> but, but but exactly like they, it was one of those like it's great to see that he's got this but it, it didn't give us the the depth or the the minute the, the the weird day-to-day -day right. minutia we have to assume that was there instead of getting to see it whereas uh yeah. Yeah, so it is interesting the way that we do tell the stories. Uh, there's still a lot of that, as much as it makes people annoyed that there are female characters at all, you know, that camp. Well, but I think there's still a lot of work to be done in, in kind of, you know, bringing that yeah. more to the forefront. Well, and I think that's the other part that is, again, as somebody that, you know, you're looking for this balance. And I mean... You know, like you said before we 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 have like the you know it's it, it's it's like um, the checklist for you know uh, male toxicity in terms of what triggers them in terms of like you know you've you've got a you know a lead female you know or three lead females and you know you got your you, you got a blonde you've got a you know a woman of African American ancestry you've got you know uh, a Pakistani you know so you got you got your you know your Muslim immigrant you got like it's like it's like it's checked off all the boxes <laughs> of every, you know it's like sure. you're just like waiting for the you know anyways so you got that and I think well and it was interesting too because my son made a comment about um about Nick Fury and, 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 and I said, well, yeah, but stop and think about Nick Fury because he was like, yeah, this is a different one. And I said, well, yeah, but think about how he was in the other, like in the original Captain Marvel also think about, and he had, hadn't yet watched all of um, Secret Invasion. And this is this whole thing where, again, it's the other side of a character. And, and it's like, he doesn't have to be, 
you know, the the weird angry guy that's barking orders or telling somebody, yeah, to, you gets know, to be funny do fo- all the orders, yeah. get your head out of your arse, do the thing. It's the more like the, this is again, that other side. And, and, and again, chaos has been introduced into his life in, and, and that he can, you know, his relationship with Carol is different than it is with anyone else, because in a sense it happened by accident. Again, she introduced chaos into his life. And then from that, he built these other things. So she is, you know, the true first Avenger and, and, and that person. And then he realized and I, how I would see it is he realized that once he started hurting cats, interestingly, mm-hmm. um, he had to be a little bit more rigid. And, and he, so, I mean, I even love the fact that they brought in the whole, here's the hurting cats, mm-hmm. because it is a metaphor for some of the other things that have been going on. And that idea of, again, what is what is Goose really? Uh, you know, Goose is laying golden eggs here. We just don't know it. There's there's the oh, solution no. to our <laughs> problems. <laughs> Never thought about this. Goose and there's and this solution. golden eggs. Dang. Yeah. yeah. And, and that they're having to round up. And so that this, this thing that's been freaking everybody out is now turning into the solution. And, and, you know, you get all of these, again, it's the element of chaos, but it's still at some level, the solution. And then watching again, the family getting involved. So here's some way that we can help, you know, do things. And in, in some respects, you know, I'm thinking about the mom, like this, this is her thing. I'm a mom. I heard cats. I da, 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 da. And then even when they're all in the thing there and her brother is praying, I said, are you praying? Yeah. Like, you want me to stop? No, you want me to just keep going. going. I, I'm all about the science. I'm all about the tech, but I will take whatever things that we might, you know, anything that'll get us a little further over the line, you know, get us home safely. Like, so I think that was the other part was that I think all Marvel movies have a little bit of tongue in cheek and playfulness, but I think this is where we get to see a little bit more of it. And it might've been a little bit more than some people could handle. And I think it even goes into why some people did not understand um, you know, about Prince Jan and again, his planet and people singing and, and whatever. And I think it's, I hate, it sounds really weird. I also think it's maybe why they, they put in, uh, you know, a Korean actor because I'm not sure they could have. So yes, on one level representation, um, but on another level, I'm not sure they could have, who they would have hired out of the North American acting world. Hmm. Interesting. That would have done that, there, you know. There are some interesting things being done. I mean, as as we see, musicals are kind of back, as you see with the color purple, mm-hmm. and which I haven't seen, and Wonka, which by the way is pretty awesome. If anyone hasn't seen Wonka, I'd go out and see it. Anyway, yeah. Um, but yeah, there is something with music that's being the, the anyone who's watched the the first episode with the latest Doctor into the Doctor Who. Um, there's a whole weird musical thing they do in that that is way unexpected. So, yeah, there are interesting things that are po- poking up there, and I think it has a certain exuberance, maybe. It has a certain uh, connection or something that that people are trying to experiment with how to put movies, or sorry, how to put music into some of the projects that we don't well, always see it. And what I think of is, I mean, and I, and it's not the only place it happens, but it's the one place that stood out in my mind is I think about the Buffy the Vampire series. And at some point it's a, you get X number, you know, it's like you get into a certain, and then you have an, a musical episode and it's kind of like, we're this, so far into the MCU. And you, so you get these things where suddenly it's the blah, blah, blah. And again, how it happens, whether it's something again, you know, uh, something spell related or magical, or if it's the, somebody has the dream or whatever but you have you know there's the the musical episode and i think that was the mcu's way of putting it in there it is in there canonically even if they did change who the character is um and i think the other part too that folks don't realize is that a lot of korean actors um because of the way their entertainment system works first of all some of them do actually come from the k-pop industry but you are basically expected to be a triple threat you Mm. have to be able to sing dance and act and so um this, you know, his outfit and everything that they did there, yes, it was over the top, but you know what? It's no weirder than some of the K-pop um, videos that I've seen. Um, like those are, they, those can be their own weird trippy parallel universes. And it reminds so, me of like I, Bollywood and stuff too, as you're yeah, saying Yeah, well, yeah. and I think they leaned into that. So it's like, it was just over the top. I do love the fact too, then what it was the whole speaking versus singing. And so that it's the whole, well, he's talking. Yeah, well, cause he's, he's bilingual. Like just that notion of here's a multilingual character. <laughs> and, you know, and, and I, what I also loved about it too, was it was kind of playing with and shutting down the trope around 
how we deal with romantic leads uh, or, or leads where, you know, is is the main character involved in a relationship and how they get handled with men and how they get handled with women yeah. and how a lot of times it's, again, we've talked about Wonder Woman and what, what happened to Steve and body snatching and whatnot. Um, so, and, and so she sort of shuts it down where it's like, this was done. It's, it's literally the proverbial marriage of convenience so that this guy could fulfill his role but we got to go do these things. And the fact that she even had to like, you know, had to wear this weird pillow Hat, with like yeah. squid looking things like they totally leaned into here's all of the weird stuff associated yeah. with marriages, obligations, uh, roles that are played this, that, whatever the fact that she's suddenly in like a Captain Marvel ball gown, um, you know, that is just right. screaming like hey, that it came out of a Disney flick, a Disney, you know, animated thing. Like how much more Cinderella? I mean, it's a good thing that, you know, Disney, like they're all tied together because, you know, from a, uh, you Does know, copyright perspective, Disney princess? Like, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> <You know? laughs> nobody else in the world could get away with doing a dress exactly <laughs> like that without having Disney legally <laughs> up in their business. <laughs> Um, but uh, leaned right into there and, and that's where the humor came from. So that, t- so for me, it was one of those, like you, you check off your musical box episode, you check off the, yeah, yeah, yeah. Romantic stuff, whatever. No. Yeah. Yeah. I got the, I got the, the hot guy that you're going to see in a whole bunch of other things. Um, and yeah, charming, you know, very few people the... can carry that, you know, carry off that butterfly headdress. Um, At the same time, he's a fighter, he's this and that, and he does these other things. So yeah, I mean, would I have wanted half an hour of him in that movie? Absolutely. But you know, there's my fangirling. But at the same time, they put him in there enough um, that it, it, he does what he needs to do for the purpose of this story, especially with it being as short as it is. And then again, tongue in cheek, a lot of fun, over the top, checks the box. Thank you for listening to the Court and Parts Podcast Network. To listen to more Court and Parts shows, visit courtemparts.com.